Ecco. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for another ACE Spotlight presentation. My name is Ruz Bafrasiabi and I will be your host. Uh, today we have uh, Professor Daisuke Kihara and Xia Wang uh, who will present their recent work titled uh, Protein Docking Model Evaluation by 3D Convolutional Neural Networks. Uh, Daisuke Kihara is a full professor in the Department of Biological Sciences and the Department of Computer Science at Purdue University. Uh, his research projects include the development of computational methods for protein docking, protein 3D uh, structure prediction, protein function prediction, and computational drug design. He has published over 170 research papers and uh, book chapters. His research projects uh, have been supported by the National Institute of Health, the National Sciences Foundation, uh, the Office of the Director of Ni uh, National Intelligence and Industry. In 2013, he was named a university faculty scholar by Purdue University. Xiao Wang is a PhD student in the Department of uh, Computer Science at Purdue University. His research projects include the development of computational methods for evaluation of protein docking models, uh, deep learning uh, for 3D cryo-EM image, and uh, self-supervised uh, learning on computer vision. With that, and without further ado, I pass the mic to Xiao uh, to start his presentation. Okay, thank you, Rusby. My name is Xiao Wang, and I'm from the Department of Computer Science, Purdue University. So now I'm a second year computer science PhD student in Purdue University. Today, my advisor is Professor Daisuke Kehara, and today I will introduce our recent project, DOF. DOF is a protein docking model evaluation by 3D deep convolutional neural networks. Okay. Let me first make a brief introduction for why is this study important. So as we all know, proteins are working force of a cell. And also, 3D structures are quite important for us to understand the protein functions. And furthermore, protein docking structures, which we will study today, can contribute to drug discovery. As you can see from the right figure, Proteins are very important in our daily life. For example, if you look at the left bottom part, the virus, a lot of virus are formed by proteins and their key functions are implemented by the proteins. So that's to say, proteins sometimes will infect us and give us bad influence. However, proteins also very important to form our own functions. If you look at the line, there are a lot of membrane proteins. They are used to control the inflow and outflow of a cell to help the cell to perform its own function. What we will study is the 1GAX, if you look the medial right part, and the 1QF6, such proteins. Such protein, usually we call it as protein complex because it's usually formed by pro two proteins. What we will study is how to bind those two proteins together to form a protein complex. So this is what we call protein docking. Protein docking is computational modeling approach for protein complex structures. Usually, it formed of two components. One is receptor, one is ligand. If we look at the right figure, if we consider the green one as a receptor, the red one as a ligand, so protein docking just means how to combine the ligand, the red one, to the green one, the receptor. So after they combine, we have a new protein context, which is called AB here. So as you can see, it's very essential to have a correct docking pulse to make the protein complex to be stable, to be really happened in the real environment. 
So to implement that, there are usually two different methods to do that. First is template-based modeling. Why we call it as template-based modeling? That's because template-based modeling means that we search across large database to find a template, which is similar to the protein structures. And we fo follow the same docking paths in that protein complexes and to guide our protein docking now. That's called protein-based modeling. However, sometimes it's not easy for us to find a protein docking template. So we should do a initial modeling. A initial modeling just means we propose a novel way to find the docking post to dock two proteins together to form a protein complex. Up to now, a lot of methods about a initial modeling has been proposed. Here are some examples of the results of protein docking. As you can see, uh, the green and the blue are two proteins. One is receptor and another is ligand. Although their conformation will not change. However, how they bind each other have different binding sites and have different binding pulses. So it's not easy for us to filter out which one is correct which one is incorrect. So what we will study in our research project is how to filter out the correct ones. As I have said before, initial protein docking has been very successful, but the limitation is that it only generates a small number of correct models compared to a large number of simulated docking models. So it's very necessary for us to filter out correct models from thousands of models by our proposed scoring functions. Previously, it's very most of the scoring necessary methods for are based on physics or statistics. However, they do not always work. For example, here I use GOP as an example to show how they work. GOP is a very traditional method based on statistics and physics. GOP will take two atoms belongs to residues into consideration. It will take the distance of two atoms and the angles of two atoms into consideration and to check the statistics from a large pool of proteins to give a score for each atom. Then finally, it summed up of all the atoms and get a, an overall score. And it uses this score to evaluate if this docking is reasonable or not. However, it's not always successful, and it sometimes can't work for some very difficult targets. To evaluate different docking methods and to evaluate different docking scoring functions, we have uh, Capri docking experiments, which is widely ho hosted by widely participated by a large number of groups. And up to now, we are still under the way to have a better docking methods and a better scoring functions. So let me briefly introduce our motivation to use deep learning on this area. First, it's very obvious. Deep learning can make use of large amount of data. And the successful applications on computer vision has proved that deep learning can help us to improve the conventional methods to have better performance. Also, we found the successful application on protein structure evaluation. And also, we find the excellent performance on 3D imaging recognition tasks. For example, if we look at the right figure, this work called WorksNet. WorksNet is the first deep learning work that takes point clouds into in, as input to output the action or the is the first or the deep learning work that of the point clouds. Sometimes the point clouds will have chairs. Sometimes it will have some animals. We try to recognize from the point clouds. 
Similarly, we can also regard our proteins as another form of point cloud. If you first check the bottom part of the proteins, the right figure shows the protein structures. However, if we only consider the atom locations, we can regard it as a point cloud form, which is shown in the left. So that's to say, our protein structures can also be seen as a form of point cloud and serve as input to predict if the protein structure is correct or not. Similarly, we apply the idea here to evaluate our performance here. First, we have a key idea here is that different from protein structure evaluation, we are evaluate protein docking models. So that's to say, we need to focus on interface regions. Because interface regions are most responsible for protein protein interaction. But what is interface regions? Interface regions just means that we have two proteins that we form a protein complex. One is receptor, one is ligand. They have some interface areas. We consider these interface areas that performs very important in the protein-protein interaction. So we want to focus on the interface region to give the evaluations for different protein docking models. So our key idea is to use the interface region information and combine with deep learning to evaluate protein docking models to judge if it's correct or not. To briefly review our work, here I briefly show how our work works. First, we have protein complex. Then, we somehow compute the energy score based on previous methods, such as GORP and IT score. So we have the figure which shown in the middle. Here, the color just means the scores of the energy function for each atom. If we see the red colors, that usually means the atom is unstable because red means higher score. Higher score means higher energy. So higher energy usually means unstable structures for a protein. So as you can see from the figure, the interaction areas of two proteins mostly covered by red. So it's highly possible that docking is not correct because the interaction areas, the interface regions, with very high energy score. That's to say this area is not stable. However, if you look the center of two proteins, which is shown in green and yellow, so you, you can easily see they are quite stable compared to other areas because they sh shows the lowest energy score. That means they are stable. And then, we extract the interface region because we want to focus on the interface region to evaluate the docking model if the docking model is correct or not. Then, based on the interface region, we draw a box based on its center. And then, we use the deep learning methods to evaluate that. For more details, I will introduce each step one by one to discuss the details. First, let me briefly introduce the data preparation of our study. In our study, we have two datasets. One is ZDoc dataset, another is DocGround dataset. ZDoc dataset is a well-known Docken model dataset. In total, it has 178 protein complexes with around 54 thousand decals for each target. For this target, we use TM score to make sure the training and testing are completely independent to each other. So we use ZDoc dataset to do the training and testing. 
also here to really prove that our model works in a general way we use course testing here also based on the tm score to split the training data sets also here four fold, two one for really testing and three for as training we do that rotation so we have four models here and we pick the best, more general model to do our testing. So another data set is dark round data set. Dark round is another docking data set formed by another docking method. It has in total 58 targets with around 100 models for each target. We only use this dog ground data set for testing. Why we use this data set here is because different docking groups have different protein docking simulation methods. We want to show that our evaluation methods, our scoring function, do not only apply to one single docking method. We can focus on the docking structures we can evaluate the docking structures from different methods and have good performance. So to augment our data, we use the rotation as we shown in the right animation. So you can see if we rotate the box, box cell, we have different conformation of protein interface regions. And we use that for the positive or the correct protein complex structures. That's because, as we said before, we have a large number of incorrect protein complex structures. However, among all these protein complex structures, we only have a limited number of correct protein complex. So to argument that we rotate the correct protein complex to have more correct structural inputs. After that, we do the data balance for positive, the correct, the negative, the incorrect protein complex structures as our input. So finally, after the data balance and data augmentation, we have in total around 1 million training examples. And for testing, we have around 50,000 correct structures and around 30,000 or more incorrect structures. Xiao, if I can interrupt you for a second, we have a question online. They're asking, can you elaborate on TM score and how it's used to create your train test data sets? Okay, okay. So let me go back to the TM score that I have introduced to the data preparation. Actually, TM score is a well-known score that measures the similarity of two proteins. That is widely used in protein structures. So why we use that is that we find an interesting thing in biology is that if two proteins are similar, although they may look very different from the conformation, but if they are internal seminar by TM score. We can easily have very good performance on those proteins because that somehow our model just memorized the protein conformations to apply to a seminar protein. So to avoid that, we use TM score, which is a widely used similarity score to filter out the independent targets to make our training and testing be independent. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. So let me go back. So, and then based on that, we calculate the atom-wise energy score based on previous methods, as I introduced before. GORP is a very well-known energy score based on distance side chain of interaction residues. GOP is developed about 10 years ago. The basic idea here I have described before is to take the distance and angles 
into consideration to analyze if the structure is stable or not based on previous statistics from a large number of proteins. So, based on GOP score, we also slightly modify GOP score to allow it to give each atom a separate score for energy function based on its energy function. So, based on that, we plot colors for each atoms, as you can see from the right figure. The right figure, if you check the figure A, the left ligand is the correct pulse, the right ligand is incorrect pulse. If you see the right figures here, red, figure, uh, red colors here, red color just means that higher energy score, that means the energy is higher, it's not correct, it's not good. And the blue usually means lower energy score, that means the energy is lower, so the structure will be more stable. So if you check figure B and C, you can easily find the B is the correct ligand. So the correct ligand has more areas covered by the blue or white, which means this structure is much more stable. However, the incorrect ligand, the figure C, so you can see a lot of areas is covered by red. That means it has high energy score. So the binding is not very stable. And yeah, then, if I can ask one question, could you go back to the previous slide? Okay, no problem. Yeah. No, no, the one after this. This one? Yeah, so you mentioned that calculation energy is scored based on distances of side chains. Um, yeah. And you, you previously mentioned that uh, the, the correct structure of the protein is not uh, always known. Um, my, my question is, uh, considering the fact that the structure of the protein is, is dynamic, which, which structure do you select? Um, or how do you select the right structure? No, no, there are actually is not right structure for GOP. GOP's so basic idea is that it used a large number of correct structures that is discovered in the experiments and they use those structures to build a database. This database records if two residues interact with each other, what is the most correct distance and angles of each atom in the two residues. So it somehow builds a statistics from a lot, large number of correct structures. And based on that, it has the information so it just used the source from the previous, a lot of correct structures to based on those statistics to give the score for each atom. Uh, maybe I can uh, I can add a couple of uh, 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 more uh, uh, well uh, explanation. So uh, in the protein uh, uh, docking uh, prediction, uh, we so uh, we the correct answers come from experiment. And there is a database called Protein Data Bank (PDB), which stores lots of protein structures experimentally solved. So uh, the collect, uh, correct binding poses are coming from the experimental data um, from PDB, and the wrong poses come from uh, computationally generated uh, wrong uh, translation and angle interactions between the two uh, two proteins. And uh, yeah, so uh, and the proteins are dynamic and then changes conformation. Uh, but here, uh, most of the of the protein interactions keeps uh, the individual proteins um, well almost in the right, uh, same pose, same structures, individual structures. So here we are neglecting the, the small details of the, of the, the dynamics of the, uh, you know, atom, uh, atom like fluctuations. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I go back? Yeah, yeah, please continue. Okay. So what we will do for next step is just as we mentioned before. We want to focus on the interface region because it's very natural to think that for two protein docking together, the docking sites is much more important compared to other sites that is far from the docking sites. 
So the interface is defined in Capri computation or the experiments. The definition is that residues within 10 extra of any residues of other another protein is defined as interface definition. So if the residue is belong to interface is based on if it is close to another residues belongs to another proteins. So here we show an example of atom distribution in the interface area. If we check the right right upper part, this is the protein complex. If we consider the blue one as receptor, the green one as ligand, so we can consider the center part as somehow as interface region. Based on our definition, we can extract all the residues and atoms in the interface region. So, in the right bottom, this figure shows all the atoms extracted from the interface region. So that's what we call atom distribution in the interface region. Similarly, we have discussed energy function before, such as scope. We assign each atom with the energy score. So we can also similarly get the energy distribution in the interface region. <clears throat> After we get all the information. Sorry, if I can ask one more question. Um, they're asking online when calculating uh, GOP for atom, is it based on full model atom or interface atoms? Oh, if we. Calculate the atom is based on full model instead of only the interface because for the for the outlier of the interface regions, such atoms also interact with other atoms that outside of the interface region. Okay, so, thank you so much. Okay. Yep. So the uh, yeah the, the GOP score is computed for for all the atoms, but uh, since uh, uh, Shao will use uh, the box to extract only the interface region, the information of GOP is is just okay. Only the only the interface atom uh, information is taken from uh, uh, as a as a feature input feature. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, let me continue. So when we draw the atom distribution and the energy distribution, we can have input here. As you can see, for atom distribution, we consider four types of atoms, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and other atoms. Because oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen are usually what we call heavy atoms of proteins. So we consider them as three different channels. For other atoms, we consider it just as other ch channels. Also, for energy score, we consider the GOP score and the IT score as our feature to input. So simply see, we have two different input, atom distribution and energy distribution. So our output is what we call probability. Actually, it's, we can also view it as a quality score. It's based on how it's similar to native structures. Here, if you see the blocks, that usually consists of three layers. One is common used convolutional layers. Another is batch normalization layer. Third is ReLU activation layer. So from the 20 cross 20 box, we somehow reduce the dimension based on the blocks. And we also use some pooling layers to further reduce the dimension. And we extend the channels. And after that, when we get the features, we flatten it as a vector. And based on this vector, we use fully connected layer to reduce its dimension, to finally output the probability with the sigmoid activation. Also, to avoid overfitting, which is commonly happen for fully connected layer, we add dropout layer with com commonly said 0 0.3 dropout factor to make the model to be more general. Here I have some training details. For optimizer, I used NADAM optimizer. NADAM is 
and improved washing of Anna, which is commonly used because it's easy to train to get a somehow good point compared to SGD optimizer. So we use NetM here. Also, we use the learning rate 0 0.002 as our initial learning rate. For different feature combinations, we somehow tune the learning rate and have different learning rate for different feature inputs. For weight decay, we use the default 0 0.04 weight decay. Also, for the weight initialization, as commonly used in conven conventional CNN, we use the Glorot uniform. Also, <clears throat> as I said before, our dropout layer is applied for the free connected layer. The dropout setting is common with 0 0.3 dropout rate. Xiao, there are some questions online if uh, I can interrupt you. Uh, so the first question is, was there any specific reason or domain knowledge on why GOP and uh, IT score uh, were included as features? Yeah, because GOP and IT score, they actually somehow you can view that it has energy distribution. Usually for protein, if we want to study protein structures, energy distribution is very important to evaluate if this protein structure is stable or not stable. Usually, if the protein structure energy score is very low, that means the energy is very low. The structure is very stable. So it's more likely that this structure is correct structure instead of simulated run structure. That's why we use the energy score. OK. OK. And um, the second question is, um, they're asking, does second last layer consist of ReLU activation? A ReLU activation? Yeah. Uh, because uh, we usually use ReLU because the fact is that uh, previously a lot of methods use sigmoid as activation function, but there are some uh, problems with gradient vanished because of the sigmoid sometimes just ignores all the they uh, when we calculate the gradients the sigmoid can, can somehow make the gradients to be smaller smaller and smaller finally when it back proper gets to the first few layers the gradients almost vanish so to solve that problem now in the convolutional neural networks People are commonly used to do as activation function compared to sigmoid or previous day 10H, something like that. So okay, I, I can uh, add add uh, some some well just uh, just sh short comments on the IT score and GOP. Actually, uh, IT score and GOP are, are, are one of the, the this kind of statistical uh, uh, scoring functions people have developed for structure prediction and protein docking. Uh, there are lots of them. And we use this specifically for go uh, specifically GOP and IT score because uh, we we found those are uh, working very well, uh, relatively well, uh, compared to others in uh, in our uh, earlier studies. Thank you so much. Okay, let me continue. So, for our training, I tried different input combinations. Usually, we consider two different things. One is the input channels. Another is the walkthrough size. We tried one, the first we tried is that we use different size of the walk cells, the box, to include the interface region. First, we tried 20 extrams. But we found that sometimes 20 extrams box is not big enough to include all the interface regions as input. So we only have a simple test here called Atom20. Although you can see Atom20 and Atom40, their validation performance are similar. But from our results on all the testing sets on the dog benchmark and dog ground benchmark, we found Atom40 is much better because it includes bigger regions, which covers all the interface regions that may help us improve our performance to be a more general model. Also, 
We try different input combinations here. For example, we try to only use the atom distribution, which is atom 40 here. We also try to only use GORP as input feature, IP score as input feature. We also try different combinations. Although if you just simply check the validation accuracy or training accuracy, they are quite similar uh, with small difference. But on our testing set performance, that's another story. We really find that some combinations can't be very general, although they perform relatively the same on the training and validation set. So first, let's check our performance on the ZDoc dataset. So the solid lines are previous conventional methods, the best methods for the conventional method. Why is that we already said the GOP? Another is IT score and uh, Z rank and also Z rank 2 and also IRED. IRED is the latest version of the uh, evaluation, but it on, it's developed based on the doc data set. So, and the dashed lines are all methods of different uh, feature input combinations. So as you can see, all our different feature combinations perform better compared to all previous methods. Especially for most targets, as if you check the hit rate on top one, you can see that for most targets, we can get hit on top one. That's very important if we consider we have a pool that have 50,000 docking models in it. We want to be the first to pick up the correct docking models. That will save our time for experiments. Because when we want to verify the docking models, we always need to do experiments to verify that. Also, consider the limitation of the doc dataset. Because the doc dataset, they always generated the docking models based on a single method developed by this lab. So, it's also possible that our scoring function only learns how to evaluate based on their generated models to show that our method is a general method instead of a limited method. We also do the evaluation on doc one dataset. So from doc one dataset, our results are much more obvious. So you can see for most of our input feature combinations, our performance is better compared to their methods. If you check the dashed lines and solid lines, you can see most dashed lines wins. Also, one important thing that we found here is that on this testing dataset, DOF Atom 14, which only used atom distribution, performed best among all other methods. Based on our Discovery, we found out that DOF Atom 40, although on validation or training, it seems similar to other methods. But from our results on DOC1, also on Capri, that we did later, we found DOF Atom 40 performs better compared to all other methods. It's more general compared to other methods. Also, to show our DOF goal, only takes the GOP information as our feature input to train a model and to evaluate. We compare with the previous score. You can see we also have very good performance. So the x-axis just means the GOP hit rate for one target. The y-axis means the DOF GOP hit rate. So you can see a lot of dots are in the left upper part, that means DOF GOP has higher hit rate on the same ta target for GOP on top 20. Similarly, we also compare DOF IT score and IT score. So you can see much more dots happened in the right upper part, that means a left upper part, that means our of IT score performed better compared to IT score. That also agrees with what we sh shown in the evaluation on ZDoc dataset and on DOC1 dataset. 
Uh, sure, maybe I can uh, I can add, add uh, just a, a couple of more explanation here. So uh, here we are comparing how the, the uh, deep learning can improve the performance over conventional methods of GOP and IT score. So in DOP and IT score, it is computing a score for every pair of atoms at the interface, basically. So it's a pairwise inter some of the pairwise interaction. That's on the x-axis. And y-axis is what happens if we map those energies on the surface interface and then check the distribution of the energies in the surface in 3D space. So it can and by, by Dove, we can capture those uh, the 3D distribution of energy, you know, like multiple uh, uh, point interactions, atom interactions more efficiently. That is making the improvement uh, of the, you know, we are using the same feature, but by considering the multi-interaction, uh, multiple particle interaction, we can improve uh, the performance. Um, so that's, that's what the message of this plot is. Yeah, thanks, Professor. Yeah, that also just proves that our interface information extracted by our methods and trained with our deep learning methods can perform better. That we can better capture the interface interaction information instead of just summing them up. Because GOP and IT score just simply sum the energy of each atom up to get a final score. So we can find a better pattern to map it. Okay, to show our model's feature encoding ability, we also use TSNE to analyze the feature encoding by our network. TSNE is a method that's similar to PCA, which reduces the feature dimension to compare the feature distribution of different classes. To address our model's generalization and ability, we use the feature encoding to show that our model encodes better, better feature compared to before. Um, the feature encoding is just that instead of the classification layer, uh, let's go back to the network architecture. When we ignore the sigmoid map to output the probability, we use the 100 vector as our output feature. And based on that feature, we use TSNE to compare. Our feature encoding for different classes are indeed very different. So if you check our TSNE plots, which is uh, just uh, the feature encoding, you can see for acceptable models, which is shown in black, and the incorrect docking models, which is shown in gray. So you can clearly see, based on the feature encoding, even though we don't, we don't, we even don't lead to further just based on our model. Simply just by clustering, we can easily find the accepted models and the incorrect models are clearly separated. Here we show two examples. One is Dove Atom 40. Another is Dove Go. So you can see the accept models clustered together. They may separate it in different areas, but they are cl clearly separated with those incorrect models. Okay, that's all for feature encoding ability of our network. And what we have in this paper is that, first, we are a novel application of deep learning to do protein docking evaluation. And from the performance on dock ground and Z dock, it's clear that our performance are much better compared to previous scoring functions. Also, another worth noting point is that protein docking is very important to drug discovery. So that's to say, if we have a better scoring function for protein docking evaluations, that also reduces the workload for experiment people to do the drug discovery. Because we can easily find a correct simulated do docking pulse, which can help the experiment people to correctly find the docking models. Also, another idea is that our model is the first method that utilize the atom distribution and the energy distribution 
to serve as input to forecast on the interface region to have excellent performance on different docking data sets. Also, uh, we have released all our codes and we also have a platform if you don't want to learn all the details of the codes. It's very simple that you just upload your docking models and we can give a score based on different input feature combinations. And I think that's all. That's our lab members. Thanks. Any questions? Thank you so much. Um, so one of the questions that we had uh, previously posted online, they're asking, uh, have you tried physiochemical properties of protein atoms as features? Uh, no, sorry, we don't try that. Because we think the group is enough to consider the physics interactions to serve as energy input as part of our feature combination. But that's a good way for us to try. OK. Um, in regards to the features you selected, uh, did you study the, the feature importance uh, as to which one uh, has the highest importance in your results? Uh, you mean for the different input features? Yeah. Oh, uh, we did not try that. But we have the different input feature combinations. So based on that, I think we think we have some uh, ideas from that. Although we did not just check the weights for different input features for the full combination, but if you look at the evaluation on background data set, you can easily find that with atom forty it performs best, and for the group and with group and IT score, if we just simply consider them, it not perform so well. That, that's because the group IT score, their calculation idea may be not similar. So if we just simply take the atom distribution, actually the physics distribution of the coordinates, it, mm -hmm. it may be much more important compared to other features when we do the predictions. OK, so, so just by limiting the features to atom 40, your expectation based on the, the graph you're showing here is that uh, it will perform better than GOP, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm seeing from the graph. OK, um, great. Let me just check if there are other questions online. Um, they're asking for the TSNE visualization. Did you just use the default values, or did you adjust any hyperparameters? No, TSNE is similar to PCI. I just used the default parameters to do the dimension or uh, to reduce the dimension to violate it. Because TSNE is just similar to PCA. It's just simply based on the feature information to reduce the 100 vector to two vectors to show in X, Y axis. OK, another question that uh, they asked is uh, whether or not you can use the same uh, model for interactions between more than two proteins. Oh, thank you. Thanks for this question. Actually, we have tried on that. We tried to use, use that for three protein, uh, protein complexes that formed by three proteins. But from our experience, the performance is not very real. Because the one of the real problem here is that for three proteins, they interacted with each other. Uh, when we extract the interface region, the interface region is much bigger and uh, covers more regions compared to now. So it's not easy to take the interface region in, as input for our model to predict. Sometimes we find an interesting thing is that our input box only covers a small region for such protein complex. So our performance is not very real. But thanks for this question. OK, so there's another question very similar. Uh, they're asking if they, you can perform a similar task where instead of two proteins, you have one protein and DNA or RNA. I think that we can apply that if we retrain that based on the different data sets. That's similar, because I know some people also work on uh, 
reporting as interacted with some small molecules. Okay. That, that's a similar application. But I think if we simply try that and consider different inputs and different features, we can work on that. Okay. Um, and with that, I think that's all the questions that uh, we had online. Thank you so much for this great presentation. Thank you, Xiao. Thank you, uh, Professor yeah. uh, Kihara. Uh, it was a great presentation. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today for this wonderful presentation. Stay safe. Um, have a great day. Thank you Good. very much. Thank you. Thank you.